real thankful and I am happy to join these other three honorees because it's one thing to honor somebody who's a far away, but it's another thing to honor somebody who lives right here where you are and where you think enough of that person to honor them just like you honor persons who you don't know anything about because they are the ones who makes it possible so that you can honor those others of us that you have honored here today. And I want you to know that I have some little contact in, in Lynette. And I have some contact in this city that goes back, believe it or not, for over 70 years. I know you want to know what in the world is he talking about. <laughs> but you know, I was a preacher <coughs> before I was a lawyer. And while I was a student at Alabama State, now Alabama State University, then Alabama State College for Negroes, living in Montgomery, the Church of Christ, which is a few blocks from here, was established in about 1948 or 1949 with a tent meeting. Used to have tent meetings then, the Church of Christ did. And they come into a community where there's no Church of Christ. And John Henry Clay ran a tent meeting in Lynette and baptized quite a few people and started the Church of Christ, which you see down here, this nice building that's here. And when John Henry Clay finished that, I knew him from being a boy preacher, and he knew I was in Montgomery, and he came to me and asked me, will you go up and preach every Sunday for this new church that I've started up in Lynette, he says, in a few months, I'm going to come back and become the permanent minister for that church. And you know what? I used to get on the bus every Sunday morning and ride it to Lynette and preach for that church that's there now. And I'm glad that it has grown and developed. And I'm glad that that was uh, my initial relationship. Then a few years later, I married a young lady named Bernice Hill, and she had a sister named Margaret Hill, and she had just finished Alabama State, and she was one of the teachers, and I think it was the Lanier School <coughs> that was up on the hill, and she taught there for several years. So I'm very thankful that I had that connection. And then in recent years, uh, and I lost that wife by death and married another young lady named Carol, and she has become a friend to somebody who's on your school board. And that's, I think, Gwendolyn Brooks. And I'm just happy that she's here. And I'm happy that I have these connections so I accept this award as I do all the awards that I receive on behalf of the thousands of clients that I've had the privilege of representing. Many of them used a young, inexperienced lawyer and trusted him with the handling their cases. So it wasn't me, it was their case. It was their cases. And I accept it on behalf of all those. You know some of the outstanding ones like Dr. King and Mrs. Parks and Congressman Lewis. But you don't know about many of them, like Claudette Carvin, the 15-year-old girl who did what Rosa Parks did, but did it nine months before without any instructions and any problems. 
I accept this award on behalf of all those children who now is able to get a good non-desegregated education, whether it's from elementary school to graduate and professional school. And I had the privilege of representing those persons. And when you, Gerald, when you see African Americans now serve on juries, when I started practicing law, there were very few of us. And I ended up filing a lawsuit which resulted in providing that you had to have desegregated juries. And in farm subsidies, we desegregated those facilities and many others. So I accept this award tonight on behalf of all of those persons whose names never appear in print, whose faces never appear on the television, but they are the ones who made it possible so that I could receive this award and others like Dr. King and Rosa Parks and John Congress and Lewis could receive rewards because of what they did 